What's up guys, my name is Wes, this is Peace Parts, and in this episode of the Miata Sequential Lights, uh, we're going to be putting in some epoxy on the back side of the panel, as well as the back side of the ghost module, to make sure that nothing gets shorted out and everything stays in place. And uh, then we're going to be cracking open, our, cracking open our housing, and start getting it uh, ready to be fitted into the housing. So, stay tuned. Alright, so what you see here first is I'm just going through soldering all the outputs to the actual ghost module to make sure that they stay connected and uh, trimming off the excess there so we don't get any uh, shortages between them. Uh, later I will go through and cover them all with epoxy in case there's any vibrations and everything that uh, could get them to rattle out of place. Next I put in, put in the programming pins, solder those in place, that way uh, if I need to reprogram it I can uh, do that by just plugging it in there. And always important, you gotta test, test, test. So, test it again there real quick. Everything worked great. Next thing I did here is wrap the outside with uh, just some regular old painter's tape and kind of give me an, an edge there to uh, fill it in with epoxy, which is what you see me doing right now. Uh, pouring in the two parts of epoxy and mixing them together and then pouring them off the back of the panel and letting that uh, tape be kind of the sides to the actual module. So there it is done with the epoxy dried on there and I can tell you that it makes the panel way more rigid and makes sure that everything stays in place and doesn't rattle apart. Alright, so I got the uh, stock housing taken apart. I pulled out the old one, the one that I originally made. As you can see here, this one was pretty basic. It uh, didn't have any resistors in there like I had talked about earlier. It uh, was just non-sequential and this one was actually all messed up. Um, this was, had a section here that uh, wouldn't turn on at all and these sections would kind of flash and uh, it wasn't very good. You can see I bent it a little bit to get it out but uh, this panel is actually still pretty rigid and uh, pretty durable uh, so uh, I did the same epoxy coating on this one as well actually with less uh, on the new module I did uh, a little bit more epoxy on it but um, so I can tell that that's held up really well uh, looking inside the reflector or inside the housing I didn't really see any bad signs of water damage or dirt getting inside of there so uh, it was sealed up pretty well uh, unfortunately when I took this one apart I ended up breaking a couple of pieces there just because it was the first time I'd done it and uh, wasn't very experienced with it so uh, I did not end up breaking a few pieces of the uh, lens itself but it ended up still sealing pretty well I ended up put, I put a, little, a little bit more of the uh, rubber butyl in that in those sections where it uh, had broken but worked out pretty well so right now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of trying to test fit and see uh, with the ghost module back in there uh, there's a little bit of space for it but I got the wires just a hair too long uh, in the future I'll probably have to make those wires a slight bit smaller a little bit shorter uh, to kind of fit stuff in there a little bit better I can get it to fit in there uh, but it does kind of take some force and uh, I'd like it to not really take too much force to get it to sit in there where I want it to be I don't think I showed this before, but the yellow here is the turn signal, and when I just blip it once, I'll get three flashes. Now that's something in the programming of the uh, ghost lighting controller that I can set up. Uh, you can set a, a minimum amount of turn signal flashes, uh, and I have it set up for three. So most new cars will have that feature where you can uh, just bump the turn signal and you'll get three flashes, say if you're making a lane change or something. And uh, so this adds that feature into those into the signals, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, so we obviously have our show mode that was shown on earlier there. The white one, oops, hook the white one up. That's going to be just our running light, just a normal running light. And uh, if I were to hook the two running light and turn signal up together, yeah, there we go, something like that. Boom. And uh, the red is actually for brake. I don't have anything wired up to it right now, so it doesn't do anything. And then blue is a startup sequence, which I kind of want to do something a little bit cooler right now. It just kind of does that and then turns on, and then uh, um, and then when you disconnect power to it, it does it reverse. Uh, the main things for now that I'll still need to kind of figure out and work with 
is I got to run the wiring out of here. Uh, the way it works out now, I, I have, where I have the ghost module back in here, uh, it would actually work pretty well to use the OEM plug or make some kind of plug in there. Uh, what I did now is I just 3D printed another piece that, and uh, glued it in there. JB welded it in there for the last time so that the, it wouldn't get any water or anything in there. And then I ran the wires out behind here and uh, sealed that up. And that was because with this panel over here, the wires came out right over there. So it ended up working really well. Otherwise, I'd have had to kind of route the wires around a little bit tight uh, or trim more of the housing. So that was what I ended up doing on that first time. But the, the new ones, I think I'd like to have the wiring come out of here on the, like the basically the only location and plug this back up. Uh, so, need to do some messing around with that and uh, then kind of figure out how I want to actually mount this in the in the housing itself. But that's the gist of it. As you saw earlier, what I did was I filled in the back side of the LED panel with uh, epoxy, just some uh, two-part epoxy from Loctite there. And uh, then I actually added a little bit of extra epoxy onto, not extra, I added a little bit of epoxy to the back side of the ghost module here uh, after I soldered in all the connections for the outputs. And uh, that should just kind of help with uh, accidental shorts or, you know, there, there shouldn't really be any reason that anything inside of there would connect and make a contact. But if something were to happen, then that epoxy gives me a little bit of extra protection. I'm getting really excited to see these things done and have them on my car. Obviously, once I get this finished, I'm going to have to do a whole nother one. But uh, definitely pretty stoked for it. Hope you guys are as well. So uh, make sure you stay tuned. All right. With that being said, that's going to be a wrap on this week's episode. Um, like I said, we didn't really get a whole lot accomplished, but we, you know, every progress is good progress. So uh, really happy with how these are going, and hopefully you guys are just ex as excited as I am to see these things done and on a car. Uh, should be really cool. So if you guys like what we're doing, uh, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and uh, give this video a like. I would really appreciate it. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.